Jamal Murray made Anthony Davis call life alert after a bewilderingly brilliant playoff buzzer beater for the ages that made the Lakers cry in the midst of beating Los Angeles for a 10th straight time. I've fallen and I can't get up. Because in game two, despite LA having questionable calls go their way all game, D'Angelo Russell, Darvin Ham, and LeBron James blamed their L on the officials. Reggie Miller and Jamal Crawford announced in favor of the Lakers, but it wasn't enough for ESPN's Kendrick Perkins, who wanted them to be 100% biased like himself. Anthony Davis wouldn't have much to say, despite calling himself the best defender in the NBA a few days before getting a dagger drained in his face. Jamal Murray made a shot. You can't blame either the Lakers or typically biased mainstream media for being shell-shocked, given Hollywood's win probability was a staggering 95.2% with 22 minutes left before the Nugs stormed back on the back of Jokic, Murray, and Porter in what's being widely regarded as one of the greatest playoff games in NBA history. Basketball neared its peak entertainment value, resulting in the Mile High City crushing the soul of not merely their opponent, but fans across the globe. Right quick, just 13.8% of you watching in this moment are subscribed, so please subscribe. All-time entertaining player, but having just been biased play-by-play -play analyst Jamal Crawford would confidently state the Lakers' early advantage was sustainable in comparison to the lead they gained and faltered in Game 1. Porter Jr. would directly after that Crawford statement proceed to dice up Hachimura with an in-and-out tween-and-pull sniping. A Reggie collapsing of Davis leads to a nifty behind the back Jackson dime, and that classic elusive high arc and trigger from Joker is met with AD being late to close out on an already tough to contest shot. After Joker gets loose as the roller for this hoop, a pin down set by Nicola for Porter Jr. sees Jokic pop to the right arc for the Peyton Watson bullet, while Anthony Davis is either sagging or unaware of the action, and it's a Serbian rainbow. That forced a Darvin Ham timeout, so the early take from Jamal Crawford stating that the lead was sustainable for the Lakers wasn't looking good. Again, Jamal and Reggie were back in the Lakers if you didn't have your game on mute. Jokic's eighth consecutive playoff double-double was recorded in the first 12 minutes alone, and he became the first player ever to record a double-double in the first frame multiple times. Meanwhile, the Nuggets cut a once 11-point LA advantage to four entering the second queue. Right here, Malone listened to Murray's request to review this initial foul call, and Mike's challenge ended up being successful. Hands considered part of the ball when it's in contact with the ball. For following that rule, well done by homeboy Pete and Kane Fitzgerald for making the call in Secaucus, New Jersey's review booth. However, as opposed to homeboy Pete and company making the correct call in Secaucus, Scott Foster and his crew would then call this foul on Christian Brown, but Malone would save his challenge this time, which would come in handy later on. Mall AG two-man game where Gordon fakes a handoff leads to Braun making a business decision when the generational dunker flies through the lane. This insane save by valuable 2023 offseason edition Justin Holiday, where he taps it loose to save possession while simultaneously initiating a fast break, gets Christian Brown buckets over Gabe Vincent. Speaking of whom, Vincent would ignore LeBron at the back end of this shot clock and get neutralized by a laterally swift Gordon as Aaron gets him to pick up his dribble on the baseline and forces Gabe to give it up to LeBron, but he's too late. It's a Justin Holiday interception. Porter Jr. would pump fake on the catch of this Nikola kickout, getting Reeves soaring past him before stepping back. The Lakers somehow found a way to blame officiating, but again, this right here is a bad call against the Nuggets, as the ref would whistle this ghost offensive foul on Caldwell Pope. I don't see how this isn't a play that happens all the time. The Stripes purple and gold 1-2 punch then results in a Torian Prince triple the very next possession. To the credit of Los Angeles, however, behind a flurry from Anthony Davis, the Lakers would extend it back to 10 with the brow operating inside by connecting on a foul line post hook, ball screening and popping for the midi, then dive into the dunkers for the Braun drop off. Braun proceeded to backline Blitz Murray for this monstrous 39 year old rejection, but chugging out for the AD overhead outlet, momentum crossing right on the catch, Euroing past KCP, and even with his former teammate bear hugging him, LeBron still miraculously scoops it home just before he hits the floor. LeBron James is still doing insane shit in year 21.
The Lake Show extended a commanding advantage to 20 with 10 minutes left in the third, but this game's unsung hero, who's been through hell and back over the last week if you've been keeping track of his story, Michael Porter Jr., would spark a personality change in this game. He relocates for this Jokic pitch and follows through. Collecting a Jokic outlet, it was then Porter given going to Murray for this lob to make it a 15-point game. Two, it's a beautiful pass. Murray! And a sledgehammer by Porter! Malone saving his challenge comes in handy when Porter's whistled on this take from Russell, but since this minor contact was made after the release of D'Lo's shot, the call was overturned. Homeboy Pete and Kane would again make a stellar call, in my humble opinion. Flair handoff in the right corner, leeways a Murray turning of the corner to get downhill ambidextrously before changing palms and beautifully twirling around Anthony Davis for a right-handed reverse on the left side of the hoop. Jamal Murray is an all-time great finisher at the point guard position, as he's proven one postseason after the next. Fundamentally clinical post-footwork that any player can take notes on occurs when Guru initially backs down Brow with force before establishing his left pivot, twisting around to his right, up faking to get Davis jumping, then embracing the contact for a beastly and one. Nikola Jokic is a special, historically great post player. A ridiculous baptizing of Murray from James takes place on this fast break. Jokic would nearly toss it away trying to draw a foul only for Gordon to make a heroic recovery and Michael Porter Jr. to clutch up. Most clutch was the Blue Arrow, who gets Davis off him when James switches. Just when LeBron makes that switch, watch how Jamal's shiftily change of pace tween and Hezzy has James guessing drive, opening up a step back midi where Murray stays poised to tie it at 99. Jamal isolating Davis in the empty side corner sees him enter an attack with an elusive gear changing in and out move that flows into an off balance fader with Davis in his grill and while falling over it falls through at the horn. What an ending. This all time great game winner from Jamal Murray in my opinion is right there with the Kawhi Leonard dagger from 2019's East Semis in game 7 strictly when it comes to a player's relishing and quite frankly owning of the moment. The killer from Kitchener, Jamal Murray, turns up his play just when he needs to, and this shot signified that. With that said, it's kind of terrifying that we've yet to see the best from this generational, working on all-time great playoff performer. Austin Reeves has played good defense on Murray for the most part over these first two games, believe it or not, as Jamal's 21 points per game have come on just 37.5% shooting from the field. The Lakers were blaming the refs, but it was the Nuggets' fourth quarter defense to hold LA to just 7 points over a 7 minute span in the fourth quarter that allowed them to make an insane comeback and capitalize on a Hollywood meltdown. While it's only a 2-0 series advantage for Denver, what doesn't give Los Angeles too much hope for the rest of this series is that D'Lo, AD, and Braun combined for an efficient 80 points. The Nuggets shot just 8 for 34 as a team from distance, yet the Nuggets still pulled out out a 10th straight W in this matchup with LA. I want to know what the Mile High City's Game 2 victory over Los Angeles tells you the most. Best answer gets next video's commenter shout out and competes to win free merch of their choosing. Today's commenter shout out goes to Neil, who says Game 1 for the Nuggets was a statement. Write it in the Constitution. Nuggets for another title. Appreciate you, Neil. Thank you for watching. Your boy DFlow signing off.